trauma have now found themselves in working in porn and we're okay to just watch it all day every day it's scary right what would you say are the uh the big three big flags that uh, a man or a woman should look out for when they're entering a new dating relationship unfortunately i really hate to say this because we can't really control this is but your childhood uh, unfortunately your childhood creates an embedded uh, kind of conflict between you and love when we have a chaotic childhood what we do is we create a core cool belief about ourselves that we're not worthy of love, we don't deserve love, or love, love is painful. And because that's a core cool belief, we go through life looking for somebody to validate that core cool belief. Now, if I meet somebody loving even, I will still try and create that core cool belief and make love chaotic. So I all I'll sabotage or do something. So unfortunately, you have to look at their childhood. Now, it doesn't mean if they've got a bad childhood they're written off. But if they haven't acknowledged the impact, you're going to start the healing process. You're going to be the punching bag. Oh man, I've been, I've been punched Have a you lot. Noticed I've that been punched as well? a lot <laughs> in my past. What kind of things do women bring, like in their past childhood? Um, well, I think, you know, I think it's the responsibility of each partner to to ask those questions. Yeah. To to you know, and I lacked the inability to. I saw that, and that was what attracted me because I was wounded in my childhood, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, we're both wounded. We're in this together. Yeah. So. I was the punching bag and kept kept sticking around because I lacked the courage, confidence, the you know skills, the security in self to walk away from the feeling of love and intimacy, the feeling of connection, the, yeah. the false feeling. Well, well, that broken childhood gives women some intensity uh -huh. that makes a man feel really loved in the moment. Absolutely. And it's honestly, they give you really passionate kind of sexual relations as well because they, they almost treat you like you're temporary. Because they the know you. Chemistry you're, yeah. is explosive, right? But it doesn't mean it's healthy. It's not healthy. And I've heard you talk about this. I've talked about this as well. It's like if a if a person you're meeting feels boring, yeah, then that's a good thing. It's a good. Thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> if it feels like exciting, yeah. explosive, and oh, magical every moment, it's like the constant like that's probably when you want to run or really ask yourself why 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 are you why? attracted to chaos? Why am I attracted to this feeling? Mm -hmm. And is that healthy? I'm not saying. It's automatic bad, but it's a definite thing to pay attention to. Yeah, and is it sustainable to do that to yeah. your body? It's nothing is sustainable. It's like being in the ring for like 10, 15 rounds. You can't it's, do. Yeah, it's also like, like you said, you can only have that feeling for so long. And then when it fades, are you saying something's wrong? I need to recreate that feeling. Yeah, and they usually recreate it by outsourcing chaos outside of the relationship. So they'll have really stable, healthy relationships, but they'll find, you know, a guy on the side or a girl on the side that will recreate the trauma that they've had as a child, unfortunately. Right. And the reason why it's such a problem is children suffer. Children are the only ones that will suffer when When you have kids yeah, and when... you've attracted each other and you've been committed and you got stayed together, yeah. the kids suffer from your behavior. Yeah, always. So we're, it's being so like... Um, so that's the first flag is to yeah. be aware of the person's childhood, right? Be aware is of the to childhood. like ask the questions. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they're not a good person or they're nice or you can't be friends or if you get into it, you just have to be aware uh -huh. this is what you might be dealing with. Yeah. Second thing I would say is do they set boundaries or do they self-sabotage? And they're two very different things. People think boundaries means, oh, you upset me. I'm never speaking to you again. I don't tolerate nonsense. I've got boundaries. That's not how boundaries work. Boundaries are actually instructions to help teach the person how to love you. So my boundary might be as simple as, okay, take the shoes off when you go into the living yes. room. Yeah, that's a boundary. Self-sabotage is not saying anything and be like, oh my God, he wore his shoes on my, in my living room. I'm never speaking to him again. So I would say the ability to communicate and boundaries in a way that will bring you closer rather than simply kind of drawing lines and running away. And so I think effective boundaries is a really important red or green flag. That's, a, that's been a game changer for me with Martha because we, we really created agreements early on. Oh, amazing. What kind of agreements? Man, we did so many early on. They were just like, anytime there might have been a little like, oh, that didn't feel that good or disturbance as yeah. opposed to us just letting it slide. Each one of us were like, I don't know if I like that. I'm not saying you're wrong here, mm -hmm. but... I would just like for us to create this agreement uh -huh. so that I don't feel weird and, and I don't feel like you're taking advantage or whatever it might be. So And what was it like? One, of, one of them was one of them was like, you know, early in a relationship you're talking all the time. Yeah. Morning, day, and night. Uh -huh. And there was a couple of times where it was like one AM, we had some like minor disturbances. There was like just confusion. We're both tired. It's not getting it's getting in a loop. We're not finding a resolution to this yeah. like challenge. And so we both came to the agreement like 
and let's not have these conversations in bed. Right. Like it doesn't really seem to go well these last couple of times. It's not like it was horrible or explosive. It's just like we woke up tired and like we didn't find a resolution. It didn't feel good. Let's just have the conversation during the day when we're both awake. Okay. Not when we hit the bed and then we start talking about something that was upsetting. Yeah. And that has created so much peace because yeah. we both have an agreement. Amazing. We created a healthy boundary by calling it an agreement. Yeah. And we stick to that standard. Right. And in previous relationships, what would you do instead? Oh, I would just try to solve <laughs> the problem, stay up all night. Yeah. I would just, you know, and then it would just escalate and escalate to like frustration and exhaustion and then resentment mm-hmm. the next day. Like, why is this happening? And yeah. then it repeats again every few weeks. Okay. So this is, oh, so now it's now healthy. I explain to you what I need and we do it accordingly. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. And making yeah. sure both of you uh, are able to ex- communicate what you need so there is an agreement and making sure you both agree on that. Amazing. So if very she was- Very lucky to find a partner. Oh my God, yeah, I'm blessed. Very lucky. I'm blessed. Praise be to God. I'm yeah. probably blessed. Okay. Yeah. So do they set boundaries or do they self-sabotage? Yeah. That's the second green or red flag. What's and, the third? Uh, competition or cooperation. And what I mean by that is when you have a partner that values your well-being and wants to see you feel less anxious, wants to see you feel happy, wants you, feel, wants you to feel connected, um, they are cooperative. So when they say, when you say things like, oh, babe, I haven't heard from you all day, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I completely forgot. Uh, I'll call you in five minutes. Give me 10 minutes, I'll call you. But other times you'll have a partner where you say, oh, you know, I haven't heard from you. Stop trying to control me. You're, you're always taking over. You are, you're so needy. It's stuff like that. Is is it competition or is it cooperation? When you voice a concern, do they actually want to see that you the relationship get better and your well being matters, or are they so stuck on their autonomy and independence and not being controlled by you that they reject and neglect their responsibilities towards you? So I think that kind of understanding your partner's well being. If, if it's not a case of like, why are you trying to control me? Why? Do it's more of a case of, oh, I didn't mean to. Uh, okay, I understand your point. It's those um, partners that are in competition with each other, who can hurt who the most, or who can stay the most uh, disconnected, who can stay the most independent. Why are you together? I don't understand those relationships. It's torture. It's real torture. So it's like, oh, I'm liking extra pictures. She told me not to like pictures. Now I'm going to do 10 times more. (laughs) Oh, you know, he told me not to post bikini pictures. Now I'm going to post 10 times more. Why are you together if you're going to hurt each other? Because hurting them should be hurting you if you're in a healthy relationship. Mm. And Kate, like uh, prioritizing their well-being is a form of prioritizing your own well-being if you're in a healthy relationship. So that cooperation should be there. If it's not there, then try and avoid mm. that person, unfortunately. My work is about helping people have the difficult conversations that they need to have, want to have, don't know how to have. As long as I, they want to, I can do something. Right. If they think they know it all, And if they think they know you even better than you know yourself, Mm -hmm. but they have no curiosity.